How's it going everyone? Mandy here from On The Grow and today I'm going to show you how you can grow Shiso microgreens from start to finish. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to show you how we like to use them. So stay tuned for the full walkthrough. She's so high, high, high above me. She's so lovely. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how you can grow Shiso microgreens. And for this one, we're actually gonna be using the green variety, which is beautiful. Shiso comes in two other varieties that I know of, which are purple and Britain. And the Britain ones, I have to say, are very beautiful. You have to try them. Something I love about Shiso is it smells like candy. When you go and you rub your hand through the microgreens, you're just gonna smell this gorgeous aroma of sweetness and almost like a, a light, nice soapy smell. It is amazing. I'm sure you're going to love it. Now, before you get too on to that, because I could go on and on about this for a while, let's go ahead and go over what else we're going to need. Here in front of me, I have my three trays set up, starting with my bottom no hold 1020 tray, which is later going to be used to house our bottom water. Next, I have my slotted 1020 tray, which is used to hold our grow medium. And that way the water can go up into the grow medium and water our plants. Lastly, I have another 1020 no hold tray, which are gonna be used to place directly on top of the seed like this, and then later flip in to black out like this. Now let's get on to the seeding part, which first we have to actually measure out our seed. And today I'm gonna to be doing one tablespoon. I'm trying to get as close to 15 grams as I possibly can. And I think one tablespoon is just underneath that. So that's 10 grams. I'm gonna go ahead and do just a tiny bit more. So let's say about a tablespoon and a half. Perfect. Now let's begin seeding our tray. So today we're gonna to be using the Grow Medium Coco Coir. We use this all the time in our space. It just does a really great job. If you want to, you can use another soil like medium or even soil, and I'm sure it will do very well. As for hydroponic grow mats, I'm not entirely sure with this crop because I haven't really tested that in a while, but I know for a fact that soil and soil like mediums do amazing. I think I'm forgetting how to seed a little bit because it's very hot in Texas right now. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a little bit sloppy here, kind of bouncing back and forth through different methods. But our tray is looking very nice. It's probably hard for you guys to see, but if you look at these up close, they're kind of a nice light blue, or blue gray, I guess, with a uh, speckling on them. It's very pretty. Don't know why, it makes me wanna watch Jurassic Park. The next step after seeding is to water your tray. What I'm going to do here is I'm gonna take this on mist setting and from far away, give it a light mist to help these seeds stick to our grow medium. And now I'm going to switch this over into shower mode and give it one good heavy watering. You know that you've given it a good watering whenever the medium is saturated, but if you lift it, there's not a whole lot of water underneath the tray. That means that we did perfect here and we can move on to our next step, which is take your last 10, 20 no hold tray place it directly on top like this and grab 15 pounds of weight and place it directly on top of that. The 15 pound paver is going to help add weight to the seed. This will help with even germination and also get these to drive their radicals into the grow medium. On top of that, it will also help remove any seed holes, which is exactly what we want with this crop. Shiso tends to be a little bit of a shorter crop at first, but don't worry, I'm gonna be giving you guys some tips on how to make it taller. That's it for seeding the tray. Now we are going to place this onto our shelf in an empty dark spot. I will see you guys in a few days whenever it is time to give an update on how these are doing. Today is day three of our Shiso grow and I'm going to remove this brick and let's take a look at what we have going on. So it looks like we are just now starting to get some germination across the entire tray, which is awesome. Shiso does take a little bit longer to germinate sometimes. So we are seeing a perfect tray at this moment. And something I am noticing is that our grow medium is still quite wet. So that means that our heavy saturation is doing its wonders. 
Just remember though that if your medium is looking drier, go ahead and give it a little mist. That's perfectly fine. As for today, I don't need to do anything other than take a look at it with you guys. So I'm just going to put this tray back on top like it was, put our brick back on top, and I'm going to place it back on the shelf. I'll see you guys here in a few more days whenever it's time to give it another update on this and we'll see how we're looking then. Today is day six of our Shiso Grow and these have been underweight now for five days. So let's go ahead and pull off this brick, take a look at it. These are exactly where we want them to be. You can see that most of the seed holes have been shredded. That was the help of this brick. And then also we've got even germination. What we'll be doing today is we're actually going to take this tray after I wipe it off here in a minute and we're going to place it on top like this and that way we get a little bit more height from these shiso because if you look at them they are rather short and it is something that just happens with shiso. They stay short and then they randomly just like to sprout up pretty tall so we're probably only going to do blackout for a day or two. So let me go ahead and wipe off all these seed holes real quick and I'll see you in a second. So now that I have cleaned off all the seed holes I want to take a quick look at this grow medium to make sure it's still nice and moist and it looks like we are still good. I can tell because this grow medium is rather dark right now. And I know cocoa, whenever it is dry, it tends to be a lighter shade of color. So I do not believe that we need to water at all. All we need to do today is take our tray and place it on top. Now, just place it back onto your shelf so that way we can get this to stretch a little bit more. I'll see you guys here in a few days whenever it's time to take this into the light. Today is day eight of our Shiso Grow and these have now been in blackout for two days. So let's go ahead and pull this up and take a peek. Currently, I think this is at the perfect height, which means today we are gonna move on to the next step, which is introducing these into the light. But before I do that, I need to go ahead and add some water, which for me, I like to use nutrients because it gives me the best growth I can get from my microgreens when I'm using cocoa coir. I'm gonna be giving them about one third cup of this Ocean Solution water mixture. This is an organic nutrient source that we like to use. And that way these guys give a little bit more pep in their growth and we can see a little bit fuller of a tray. So let me just pour a little bit of that in there. The reason why I'm only doing that little is so that way we just keep those roots nice and moist and that way they don't begin to brown. But for the crop itself right now, it really doesn't need that much water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tray over here and I actually need to flip on my light. Which I think this is a good point to talk about what type of lights we're actually using. So if CJ will come down here a little bit and we get a better shot of these. So what we like to put ours under is these three 20 watt LEDs. These are 6500K in their light spectrum, which puts them in that kind of daylight area. Um, these put out 2200 lumens a piece, which means our entire shelf is about 6000 lumens. These lights are relatively cheap at about $7 a piece, and they have done a great job for us for the last eight months. On our shelf, we also have these little AC infinity fans, which are actually computer fans that we have hooked up. And what that does is it pushes the air from these lights and gets all that hot air out of there so we don't have microclimates going on. So I'll see you guys in a few days whenever these have greened up from the light and we'll see how they're looking. Today is day 11 of our Shiso Microgreen Grow and today is actually gonna be harvest day. But before I show you this beautiful tray in front of me, make sure you smash that like button if you haven't already. It really does help our channel and it helps these microgreens grow because they are powered by your likes. And if you haven't subscribed to us either, make sure you subscribe as well. Now we can go ahead and move on to this gorgeous tray in front of me. As I stated before, today is harvest day, so let's take a closer look at this tray. You can see that we got a great height on this tray and we got really even germination here. And we're just beginning to see that truly coming through, which this is whenever I like to harvest it. You can let it grow out a little bit longer if that's what you choose to do. Just make sure you taste test it to make sure it's still sweet and not bitter. Another thing I want to discuss, which you're not going to really get to experience until you grow a tray yourself, is right now, if you just go like this and then smell, it smells like amazing candy. It is so sweet and such a beautiful scent to it that I just absolutely love with this crop. Now let's get into the fun part, which is harvesting. <laughs> so here in front of me, I have my scale because we like to take our data. Then I have something to harvest into. So let me go ahead and turn that on, make sure it zeroes out. And then the beautiful knife, which we absolutely love. This knife is amazing. It's the first knife that we got that actually came so incredibly sharp that we had to be careful of it. Great knife, highly suggest it. <laughs> so what I like to do is I just like to lightly grab them 
and then kind of keep it leveled with the tray the best I can. That way we don't get like grow medium and then just glide right through the crop and swoosh. And harvesting gets easier whenever you start a corner and then move into the tray. Look at how beautiful those are. So these aren't gonna be as tall as some other microgreen skip, but this is a perfect height for shiso. And I think you're gonna love it. So something you might be noticing is that some of this medium is getting pulled up a little bit. That's because shiso actually doesn't root super hard, which causes whenever you harvest for a little bit of that dirt and stuff to get on there. So what I like to do is just kind of grab it and fling it a little bit and that way we get as much of that off as possible. Bam. We are finished harvesting our shiso tray and we got a total of 96 grams which is 3.4 ounces. This is a little bit on the lighter side compared to other crops like brassicas. That is because this is more of a delicate crop. But nonetheless, this was a great harvest from this tray. So let's move in to the taste test part. A little bit of these from myself. Separate them and hand some to CJ. I think that was a little bit more than some. <laughs> that was a lot. The flavor is kind of fresh, but it also has like the taste close to anise. If you've ever had anise high sop, it is very similar to that kind of tone and almost has like, um, I wouldn't really say licorice, but kind of in that area of flavor, but more on the fresh side. So that is it for our Shiso Microgreen full walkthrough grow. And now I'm going to meet you over in the kitchen and show you a way that I like to use these Shiso Microgreens. So I'll see you there. All right, y'all, today I'm gonna to be showing you how we can use that Shiso microgreens that we harvested just yesterday. And man, am I hungry. We've been shoveling mulch all day and my stomach is rumbling. So what we're going to be making today is gonna to be called an Italian tuna salad. This is gonna consist of these ingredients in front of me. So let's go ahead and go over those real quick. So what you're gonna need is of course some tuna. We're gonna use seven ounces of this tuna here. Next, I have one fourth cup of my Shiso microgreens then one teaspoon of capers, which we rinse them and dry them off before we put them in here. Then one fourth cup of mayonnaise, some tomato and onion, if that's what you wanna to top yours off with, along with some lettuce. You can even use microgreens at this point if you have any. And then also some lemon, which we're gonna be using one teaspoon of and some pepper to taste. And of course, our buns, which I almost forgot. So for our buns, we're gonna be using English muffins, which I'm going to cut in half and toast. So go ahead and grab you a mixing bowl. I almost forgot mine. And I'm just gonna scoot this aside and we can begin mixing all this together. So first let's start with our tuna, which we need to open real quick. And since this is a five ounce can, we're gonna use one and a half of these and we'll just save the other half. So now make sure that you drain all that liquid that's in here so that way you don't have a runny tuna salad. Good method is to just take the lid off and push down on it until it squeezes out all of that liquid. And let's just knock that in there. We only wanna use half of our second can. So now that we have our tuna in our bowl, let's go ahead and grab our 1 4th cup of mayo, add it into this bowl here. Try to get as much of that out of there as you can. Then let's take our one teaspoon of capers, which since these are the tiny capers, you don't need to cut them up, but if you wanna cut them up, you totally can. Then our one fourth cup of shiso, which is exciting because we grew this. Okay, take this lemon, just cut it in half. Try to remove some of the seeds if you can. And then grab your little measuring spoon and just kind of squeeze that until you get one teaspoon. And then the rest of your lemon, you can just save that and use it later. And then add that in. Now what we're going to do is take your pepper. You're basically just adding enough pepper for taste. So if you don't like a whole lot of pepper, don't do a whole lot of pepper. Or if you like a lot of pepper, go nuts. <laughs> it's kind of whatever you want to do there. I like using a pepper cracker, it works really nice. And give this a few cracks of pepper. So now just take your little spatula, kind of mix it around, make sure this is all nice and mixed together. Try to break apart that tuna a little bit more. Try to break apart microgreens a little bit. That way they get kind of mixed in a little bit better. Okay. 
So that's it for the actual tuna salad. I think that's perfect. I'm gonna set this aside now. And we're actually gonna come over here to our bread. And you wanna just cut these in half. And then place them into a toaster or in your oven if that's what you have. Well, that one's getting ready. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Okay, so now if you wanna add any onion or tomato, at this point, it's a good time to cut it while you're waiting on that. So I'm actually gonna start with the tomato because I know the onion is gonna destroy my eyes and make my eyes water like crazy. So we're gonna save that one for last. Let's cut some thin slices of tomato. Cool thing is you don't have to cut up the whole thing. And now the time has come to cut the onion. Usually I always have CJ do this part because onions affect my eyes like crazy. I'll look like I have been crying all day. So hopefully we can avoid that. I've heard that there's been things like if you take a little bit of uh, olive oil and rub it onto the knife, for some reason it's supposed to help. I don't know why I haven't tried that. We'll look into that in the future. So first we cut this off. Cool, and you just wanna do thin slices. You really don't need a whole lot. You can remove the skin afterwards. It's so much easier doing it that way. Okay, gotta check it, make sure it's not burning at all. Looks like we're getting super close. Oh, that's nice. Not too toasted, just right. Go ahead and add our other ones in there. Wait for them. So let's go ahead and start putting this together while we wait on our other bun to toast. So I'm just gonna move this out of my way give myself a little bit of plate area and just take that nice toasted bun, grab us some of this beautiful looking tuna salad, put it on. I always like to try to get it all perfectly on there, but sometimes it just likes to jump off. Okay, I think that's pretty good. A little bit of that mater. I think one slice is actually pretty good. Pretty good on that. Maybe cut a little too much. Now let's take some of these. Take some of this beautiful mix over here. This is a spring mix. Place it right on top. Voila! That is a nice shiso tuna salad sandwich and I am so excited to dive in and taste this. I will let you guys know here in a moment once this one finishes what this tastes like. That is beautiful. All right, so now I think we need to do the taste test on this, which I'm sorry, CJ, but I get to eat before you. <laughs> oh gosh, this looks so good. Mmm. Mmm. That's delicious. My mouth right now is just watering. This is so good. So, that is it, you guys. This was a super easy, simple, and quick recipe. And I would say we have enough left in there for at least another person. So if you have a family of three, I think this is a perfect amount for you. So the shiso microgreens actually pair extremely well with tuna. I've heard this so many times, and this is actually my first time trying this, and it tastes so good. I think in the future, I'm gonna totally continue to add shiso to my tuna salad to give it a little bit more flavor. And plus it's something fun and different. And I know that I grew that. That's awesome. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this recipe and I hope you guys have a successful grow with growing your shiso as well. Let us know what you think of this recipe and I'm gonna to continue to eat the rest of the sandwich and make CJ watch me. <laughs> mm. I wanna eat too. It's so good. Bye guys. <laughs>